As many of you in our community know, I'm a very passionate advocate for mental health and well-being. Moreover, I continue to remain dedicated in leveraging our podcast to help move the topic of mental health out of the dark corners of daily life and proudly into the light. In continuing my commitment, I am honored to be joined by a national leader who is advocating for increased awareness of reproductive mental health with a goal to bring improved access to care for mental health related to pregnancy, infertility, and menstrual cycle issues. In this episode, Dr. Linda Kim, CEO of Love Look Health, joins us to discuss these issues and more. I can't wait for you to meet Dr. Kim and to hear her passion and dedication for the mission in front of her team. As Dr. Kim and I both believe, the more we talk about mental health openly, the more people will get the necessary help they need to live more full and abundant lives. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Hi, Dr. Kim. Thank you for making a pit stop during your busy schedule to be with us today. Hi, Mike. Thank you. It's so nice to be here with you today. Well, I'm grateful to have you on our podcast, given the inspiring and important work with the recent launch of your organization, Love Look Health. But before we dive into how you are advancing reproductive psychiatry, a bit of housekeeping, while listening to any of our episodes, please make sure to join our free online community at passionatepioneers.com in order to share feedback and ideas and interact with the global ecosystem. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast so you will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. All right, Linda, it's almost time to learn more about your advocacy and commitment to increasing awareness of reproductive mental health. But first, I'm going to randomly select one question so we can get to know you personally, and we'll take it from there. Let's see what comes up. Ooh, this one's an important question right now, given we're in lockdown mode with the pandemic. Where's your favorite place on earth and why? I have to say that my favorite place would be a tiny island called Langkawi in Malaysia. So last year, my family and I, especially my three daughters, we went to Penang and we spent some time there and really immersed ourselves in the culture. My daughters, who are elite squash players, did some squash training there. And one week, we decided to travel around Malaysia, and we ended up in this tiny island called Langkawi, and it was just amazing. The people, the food, the scenery, the culture there, and we fell in love, and we vowed to ourselves that we'll definitely try to make it back there someday, and hopefully we will. So I always love to ask, besides, you know, reimagining healthcare, working in this industry to move the health of the industry forward for all of us, and of course, ultimately, who we all should be serving the patient. My other big passion is travel and global international travel. So I miss it dearly. But one question that I always love to ask when talking with others about travel is the food. How was the food there? So you cannot get better food than in Penang, truly. It is such a melting pot of so many different cultures. I have to say, even the street food there at the hawker stalls, they were better than, you know, some of the Michelin star rated restaurants I've been to. It's just amazing in terms of the variety of tastes that you get, the spices, the way that they make it. You know, some of these folks at the wet market, they have been perfecting their one dish for years, thousands of times over their careers. And it's just perfection when you eat it. So Really in Penang, you just can't go wrong with the Malay food, the Indian food, the Chinese food. It's just all there and it's delicious. Oh, it sounds so good. So last year in 2019, I went over to Asia for about a little over four weeks for a little bit of a sabbatical. And one spot that I spent some time in was Bangkok. Mm -hmm. And there you said two things that reminded me of this. You said a Michelin star and street food. I went to the street food establishment, the only one on the planet with an official Michelin star. And there was a whole documentary made on her. 
forgot the name of her top of my head, but what she mm-hmm. had, what she's known for and what she won the Michelin star was this, it's almost like a burrito, but made out of egg and inside these huge pieces of lobster. Linda, we literally that had to, amazing. Oh my, we had literally had to wait on the streets of Bangkok for over three hours, blazing heat, just to be able to quickly have one of these. It was worth every minute of waiting to have her food. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. I certainly miss it, but hopefully we'll be getting back to it one day as the pandemic hopefully turns the corner and we can start getting this thing cooled down so we can get back to traveling and seeing more of the world. So thank you for sharing that, Linda. Sounds like a place I need to add to the list. Well, let's start diving in. I know it's been uh, one heck of a year for all of us and you as well with the launch of your new organization, Love Look Health. But I want to go back a bit. You've spent almost 10 years at an organization that I highly admire, that I actually work closely with, and that's Kaiser Permanente. And you were there and then, of course, springboarded into now your current work with Love Look Health. But take us back on that journey of how you got to where you are today with Love Look Health. And then I want to ask a couple of questions on what you guys are working on today, where you see things heading in the future. But let's go back on that journey a bit. Share with us how you got to where you launched your own organization. Absolutely, Mike. So first of all, I was a transplant. I kind of moved back and forth on the coast for my training and studies. So I was originally born in Los Angeles, California, and then traveled around. I actually went to school in Korea for a bit, my middle school and high school there, before ending up in the Midwest uh, at the University of Chicago for undergrad, and then to Boston for medical school and training. So I really went all across the United States in terms of my studies. And after finishing my residency program, I decided to go back home to California. And that's where I landed up in Oakland, Kaiser. And I began my career as a practicing psychiatrist. So at Kaiser Permanente, we really have a mission that we are there to meet the mental health needs of the larger population. So as a psychiatrist, I was a busy psychiatrist, you know, seeing patients, taking care of them and their families doing everything you'd imagine, you know, the psychiatrist does in terms of seeing the spectrum of diagnoses such as depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, really got very comfortable in serving people and helping them feel better mentally. And just actually the true value was seeing people get better. And I loved that. And then I knew that I also wanted to really stretch my skills in terms of my leadership and administrative side. So after a few years, I became chief of the department, chief of psychiatry for the Richmond and Oakland Medical Centers. And through that, I really started to learn all the ins and outs of running a large multidisciplinary department. So we have psychiatrists, we have therapists, social workers, pharmacists, nurses, medical assistants, And how do you run that in a way that we can provide the best care possible for the larger population? And after doing that for a few years, I decided to stretch a little bit more. And I became associate chair and director for regional mental health for Northern California. And then ultimately, I became chair and director for regional mental health for Northern California for Kaiser Permanente. And in that role, started to develop and implement large-scale innovations and make sure that it was provided in a very consistent and quality way for all of the members across Northern California, across 15 medical centers. And that was a really exciting role for me because I was able to imagine and innovate and see if we could think about offering care in a better way And then actually translate that into programs and pilots and initiatives and work with teams from all over to try to, you know, turn that into actual care, again, in a very broad, systematic way for the four plus million members that Kaiser Permanente serves across Northern California. And that was an amazing experience. Again, it was just to have this vision and then see how that can affect large numbers of peoples in their lives. And after that, in that role, you know, life happens. And so for personal reasons, my husband was really busy with his job. We thought that there was a move going on. And then, as I mentioned before, with three daughters and them pursuing their squash passions, 
it ultimately came that I had to leave that organization and decided at that time that I would ultimately follow my passion, which was to really be very specific and very intentional in terms of figuring out a way to offer best in class and comprehensive and accessible care targeted and focused on women's mental health and reproductive mental health issues. So that's what ultimately led me to starting Love Like Health. Oh, that's so cool. What a great story. And thank you for sharing that, Linda. And I do want to tee this up because this is really important to me, to our community. You know how incredibly dedicated and passionate I am to mental health and well-being. We dedicate a lot of our episodes to this exact subject. But Linda, I'm really excited to explore the area that you are really, as we like to say, niching down into. And let me set the stage and then I have some questions around it. So you launched Love Look Health. You're closing in on almost a year. So congratulations. But you launched it to advocate for increased awareness of reproductive mental health with a goal to bring improved access to care for mental health issues in general, but also specifically related to pregnancy, infertility, and menstrual cycle issues. Linda, before we share a little bit more of the tactics and kind of the day-to-day of what Love Look Health is, can you maybe set the stage a bit? How big of an issue is this amongst our community members around the nation in regards to this specific slice of mental health and well-being? You know, mental health has always been a challenge for us. There is so much demand and there is just not enough supply in terms of mental health clinicians. And this was a challenge and we were at crisis point even before the pandemic. As you know, with the pandemic, we have seen skyrocketing rates of mental health issues. Even with the census done in the 2020 poll census done not too long ago, they found that nearly 40% of all those polled, the adults, you know, expressed that they had symptoms of depression or anxiety. And what's happening now is that we are really at a crisis point in terms of trying to identify better ways at reaching people. You know, our lives have become very limited with the pandemic, with the social distancing, with not being able to tap into our perhaps normal self-care and supports in terms of making sure that we feel emotionally well. And so we have to be really creative and flexible with finding new ways to support ourselves and support each other in terms of our mental health. I think this is what they say is with, you know, crisis comes opportunity. I think that's absolutely right in this instance, because there has been really rapid adoption in terms of virtual telemedicine care. There has been some easing in terms of federal regulations, in terms of how medical care and therapy is provided. And that has lent itself to an exciting time where, again, I think we are given this opportunity to reimagine, right, how we can offer mental health care, how we can support each other virtually, and make sure that that lasts and make sure that people can really know how to tap into it and access it. Because even if it's there, what I find is that sometimes it's challenging, first of all, to know how to access the care. And second of all, especially with mental health, to allow people to talk about it and to reduce the stigma around mental health care issues. And to go another layer down on that, because you're absolutely spot on, Linda, but to go another layer down on that, and one of the areas that, you know, these areas that you're really specifically focusing your energy on around pregnancy and fertility and menstrual cycle issues, how big of an issue is that? Has it been further exacerbated by the pandemic? But these specific issues that you guys are really getting after, can you give us a little bit of an understanding how big of an issue or or how big of that crisis is in our country for that kind of specific layer down? Absolutely, Mike. You know, the reason why I'm focusing on these reproductive issues is because actually it's so difficult to get care right now. So, you know, for postpartum, for postnatal depression and anxiety issues, we know that it can really affect up to 25% of all women who are either contemplating getting pregnant, get pregnant right now, or postpartum in terms of anxiety and depression. And although we talk about postpartum depression a little bit more, most probably don't realize that anxiety is what affects more women. And not only that, it's that the partners of women with postnatal anxiety or postpartum depression can also be affected with mood issues as well. You know, 
there is absolutely treatment for that. But one of the pain points that I hear people, the women and their families talk about is that it's a little bit more specialized and sometimes they don't know where exactly to get care. And especially when they start thinking about possibility of, let's say their symptoms are so severe, they start to talk about medications during pregnancy or breastfeeding. You know, there is a little bit of less comfort, right, in offering those type of care offerings to women. And sometimes they find that they have to actually knock on many doors before they get care. And again, so it's it's this need to acknowledge that there is care out there. It should be widely accessible for women and, you know, that they're actually not, um, the paths isn't as easy or simple as it should be. So that's for pregnancy. For infertility, this is something that I actually am really, really passionate about as well, because a lot of women, they tell me that they suffer alone. So it's not as talked about, right? When I had even just mentioned in some social media posts about how do we talk about infertility? How does a professional woman maybe who's busy working in her career talk about infertility? I was actually flooded with comments from women saying, oh my gosh, you know, thank you for at least bringing this topic up. I felt so alone and it felt so hard to talk about my anxiety or my depression or my mood symptoms or my lack of confidence in myself and my body now now that I am struggling with infertility. And so again, it's just, you know, mental health is hard enough. And then especially if you start to tie them in with some of the normal hormonal issues that women face, it can get even harder. Well, thank you for that. And of course, you are now an entrepreneur. Here you were going and working with Kaiser for so many years, you jumped off what we like to say, the entrepreneurial cliff and launching Love Look. So with that, Linda, I would love to hear the elevator pitch of Love Look. What is the elevator pitch for what you're building? So Love Look Health offers full spectrum mental health care for women and their families. And that's basically the elevator pitch because I reimagined mental health care to be seamless. So the way that it is now, you go out and you try to maybe connect with a therapist And then after that, if you need medications, you go and do that search all over again and you look for a psychiatrist. And maybe then if you benefit from a group, they tell you, okay, go back and look for a group therapy on this process. And so you're there struggling trying to navigate this very complex system on your own. Love Luck Health does that all for you and we offer all spectrum of care in one place. So we've decided to focus specifically on reproductive mental health care so that a woman and her family, maybe even her partner or spouse or loved one who is trying to support her as best as they can, they can come in, they'll get an an assessment evaluation and get their treatment started with their entire treatment plan in place. So if they need to see an individual therapist, they have one there. If they need to be referred for a doctor, we have a doctor on our team to talk to you about medications. If you're looking for a group treatment or support or peer support, again, that's all will be provided. If you need psychoeducation, right? Maybe some parenting classes or a class on medications and lactations, it's all there. And it really is that goal to provide that full spectrum, that seamless care offering, and to actually improve the patient experience in terms of getting their care. Because the last thing you want is to tell someone to go out on their own and find something and patch, work it together to get their care. Well, you nailed the elevator pitch. Well done, Linda. That was very strong and concise. Very (laughs) well done. What a fantastic mission and the work happening at Love Look Health. And in a moment, I'll be asking where we can find you online and how our community can get involved and learn more and all that good stuff. But let's look a little future state. Here you are again, closing in on year one with Love Look Health. Where do you see the effort heading over even in the next three, six, nine, 12, 18 months? Sometimes I would ask before the pandemic, what's it look like in three to five years? But we don't even know what next week looks like. So maybe you can share with us, how does this look over the next kind of six, you know, nine, 12, 18 months? Well, for Love Luck Health specifically, my goal again is to provide that full spectrum care. So it will be reimagining in terms of the virtual space, how we can offer that excellence and care experience for the patient while getting their care entirely virtually. So it is an opportunity, like I mentioned before, because I think people are ready and really accepting of virtual care. 
But what I want to do is make sure that that experience feels like wraparound care, right? It's not an alternative. It's not the second best. It actually feels like best in class care where they can have that seamless experience of having their clinicians, their psychiatrist and their therapist talk with one another, knowing that people know where someone is in their journey and what else they might need to add or complement to their treatment plan. So over the three, six, nine months, I'll be developing the best team possible, getting a multidisciplinary cohort of therapists, you know, and docs who are really motivated and mission driven in terms of this specific topic to come together and form the best team for our future patients. Very exciting. And let's flip the script on you a little bit with those next three, you know, six, nine, 12 months in front of you and forming up that team and continuing to create the best experience for the patients you serve. Where can our community be of help? What is one problem, need, or question that you have that our community can help with or be contemplating for you? Well, that's a great question, Mike. I'm so glad you asked. I think it comes in two parts. So one is a more global issue where I think one of the biggest challenges that we find in mental health is really the stigma and our willingness to talk openly about it. So that's one way I do think that this community can help. It's by joining in on the conversation about mental health and how mental health can affect them and their loved ones. It's about saying in different realms in someone's life, I understand, I hear you, I'm here to support you. And just, again, being open to having these conversations. And that's why I'm so glad that you asked me to talk about this here with you today, because I think it just adds to that ability to talk about it and bring it into our open conversation. So that's my first ask. The second is, you know, I am in my stage where I'm definitely trying to spearhead growth, trying to add to my tea. And part of that is, I'm just starting to start out in my uh, pre-seed funding and going around and talking with people who also believe in mental health and how mental health can be offered in a better way. So I'm definitely in that funding journey right now as well. Excellent. Well, there's a number of ways for our community to get involved. So thank you for sharing both of those, Linda. And to our community, head over to our free global online community at passionatepioneers.com. There'll be an entire article posted for Linda's episode where you can share some of those thoughts, ideas, feedback, connectivity points to angel investors, venture capitalists, or otherwise, and to share some of those insights and ideas for Linda to continue to further her mission with Love Look Health. Also, there will be contact points for Linda in our episode notes in your favorite podcast player. Just simply scroll down and you'll see those contact points. And Linda, speaking of those contact points, where can we find you online, website, social media handles, or otherwise? Well, my website is www.lovelucklukluk.com. You can also reach me by email at info at loveluck.com. And finally, my Instagram account is love.luk, so L-U-V dot L-U-K. Excellent. And again, those are, will be found over at passionatepioneers.com, our free global online community as well as in the episode notes. So thank you for that, Linda. We're going to start closing it down and we have one section remaining that I just absolutely love. And it's a fill in the blank. It's I'm a passionate pioneer because. I am a passionate pioneer because I love talking about mental health and believe clear and accessible mental health care should be available for everyone. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you for sharing that. And it is so important to me as well. And that's why I love having leaders that are so passionate and dedicated to this space and the healthcare industry on our podcast. It's so important and more important than ever. So, well, Linda, thank you again for being with us today, for sharing more of your work and where you're heading with Love Look Health. We appreciate your time. We look forward to continuing to learn more from you and continuing to follow your journey with Love Look Health. But for now, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. 
This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode. 